Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 11 of our Raspberry Pi 3 with Windows 10 IoT video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about running a .NET Core 2.0 console application with Raspberry Pi 3. Before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 10 since in that part, we did the installation of Windows 10 IoT on Raspberry Pi 3. So let's get started. Getting stage ready for .NET Core 2.0 application. So, and most important note is this, installing .NET Core 2.0 SDK cannot be done on the Raspberry Pi machine. Rather, we need to do the installation of the .NET Core 2.0 SDK in our Windows 10 host machine because Microsoft has not released the .NET Core 2.0 SDK in Windows 10 IoT yet, but it is actually available in other operating systems like Ubuntu Mate 16.0.4.02 LT. You can download there and you can work from there for the different operating system, but for Windows 10 IoT Core, no, it is not there yet. So you need to create or you need to write the code on your host machine, and then we need to deploy the code in the remote Raspberry Pi. That's the thing that we need to do for now. But in future, there will be an SDK for Windows 10 IoT as well. But as of now, no, we don't really have an SDK for that. But again, if you, if you really think that you don't know how to work with the .NET Core and how to install .NET Core, you can quickly hop over to this particular link that you can see here where we talked about .NET Core 2.0 preview to installation and also how to run a Selenium automation test with .NET Core 2.0 preview version in our Exit Automation channel. All right, and then as I said before, we also need to have at least a Visual Studio Code editor or a VS 2017 or 2015 community edition to edit the C-sharp code that we're gonna write because these are the two most universally accepted best editors where we can write the code for C-sharp. So you need to have that as well. So these are the two most important things that we need to have before we start working with .NET Core 2.0 applications. And as I said, after coding, we need to connect with our Raspberry Pi 3 via PowerShell and we need to enable the FTP service, which is turned off by default to transfer the file from host machine to a Raspberry Pi 3 machine. So we already showed how to work with PowerShell in our previous video, and we are gonna enable or start an FTP service on the Windows 10 IoT machine to transfer a file or the C-sharp code that we're gonna write right now into the Raspberry Pi 3 so that we can run the code over there. The reason why the file transfer protocol is turned off by default, it's because Windows 10 IoT is running on a very, very small device, which is Raspberry Pi 3. So if all the services are running by default, it's really going to bog down your Raspberry Pi, it's gonna heat up your device, maybe it's gonna consume a lot of energy. So that's why these are the services which is turned off by default. So we need to enable them by our own, right? So let's quickly see all of these in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Windows 10 host machine of mine. All right, so this is my Windows 10 host machine. And what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna start installing, or maybe I'm gonna start creating a .NET Core console application, which is gonna be running on the Windows 10 IoT Core machine, or the Windows 10 IoT Raspberry Pi machine. So for that, first of all, I need to install the .NET Core 2.0 preview which is already available in my machine. I know because the reason is I have already demonstrated that in my machine a few days before to run a Selenium automation test. So if you want to see what version of .NET pre Core version which is running in your machine, you can just do this, .NET hyphen hyphen version and hit enter. You can see it will show you the version which is available. Mine is 2.0 preview to 006497 build, right? So I'm gonna create from here. So to create a console application with .NET Core is much simpler. You don't really have to open a Visual Studio and you need to select a new template and then create a project. No, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is this, .NET New, and you can just do an help. You can see what are the different options which is available here. You can select the template like console application, a unit test project, or ASP.NET Core, MT, Core Web, and Razor. So there are so many other options available. Mm -hmm. Uh, these are templates available out of the box. So I'm actually gonna select the console. So this is the short name which I have to give, which is nothing but console. And then hyphen the N is gonna be for the name. And then I'm gonna give a name as a EA console test. 
or maybe EA console and I'm gonna hit the enter so you can see that it is gonna create a EA console folder here and within this we have our console project much simpler right and then I'm not really gonna open a full-blown Visual Studio 2017 for this rather I'm gonna open this with Visual Studio code which is much simpler and easier to work with all right the project is opened so I'm just gonna go over to my program.cs file and you can see this is a very very simple hello world code right I think this is more enough for more than enough for demonstration purpose so I'm gonna say hello execute automation so that you can see like it's really working or not right I'm gonna save this particular piece of code you know what you can actually run the code as well so you can uh, just uh, try to hit you can go to the debug and you can hit run you can see within this output it will show you the hello execute automation right so this is running actually a dotnet core application it is not a normal uh, .NET framework application like 4.6.2 or something like that it is a dotnet core application right so we are going to run the same application that you are seeing here hello exit automation uh, maybe i'm going to say from or raspberry pi 3 i'm going to save it and i will just go over here to my powershell and then i can do a publish Instead of going here, you can also do the publish from your terminal itself. So if you know the terminal that we discussed earlier in many of the video series of Exit Automation channel, you can just go over here and then you can maybe just uh, type .NET publish hyphen R and then you need to select the uh, environment where you are going to publish. So we are going to run this particular application on an ARM processor because Raspberry Pi 3 is a ARM based processor. So we have to select the uh, processor architecture as WinARM and then I'm going to hit enter. So this is basically going to publish our console application. There we go. That's it. So now if you go to the folder explorer and there is a bin and you can see that we have a .NET Core 2.0 and there is a WinARM. So this WinARM is nothing but the one which we just published and we have something called as a EA console.exe so this is basically compiled to run on an ARM processor which is nothing but our Raspberry Pi right so you can see within this publish folder we have so many DLL files which is required for running the EA console.exe right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this particular files into our Raspberry Pi so that I can run the same code or the same output that we saw before in our host machine of Windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi Windows 10 IoT core. So the first thing we need to do is to enable the FTP itself. So I'm just going to go over to the uh, PowerShell uh, command which is connected with the Raspberry Pi and here we need to type this start of C colon slash Windows slash listen32 slash FTPD dot exe. So if I hit enter this will enable the FTP service in our Windows 10 and now if you do a get process you can actually see the FTP service will be running right so this was not there before while we were running as you can see here right so now the FTP service is running which is cool and now all I have to do is to copy the file over to the uh, Raspberry Pi the very very simple thing I can do is I can just copy this IP address I can just go over here and let me go to the bin folder and I'm also going to copy the published file. So these are the files that is something required. Uh, maybe I'm going to just copy this whole folder. And also I'm going to do FTP colon double slash 192.160.0.163 which means it is going to be connecting to my Raspberry Pi. You can see much easier it is to connect to a Raspberry Pi, much faster as well. Let me create a folder, but the creation of folder is going to throw you an error uh, if you try to rename it. Uh, let's say I'm going to say console app. You can see it says that uh, make sure you have the permission to do the modification. So basically what I do is like uh, I just paste the folder directly uh, so that I don't really have to create a new folder for now. And now you can directly go to the PowerShell and if you do a dir you can see that the winarm folder is available so basically 
which means we have copied we are copying the files to Raspberry Pi from our host machine as you can see here all right the files are being copied right now and now if I just go to the CD of uh, win arm folder and if I do DIR, you can see that our published folder is there along with the DLLs, which is uh, we just copied. So I'm going to go to the published folder, and here we have our EA console.exe file. So this is the file which is actually compiled to this particular version of Raspberry Pi, which is nothing but the WinARM processor. So if I hit the enter, this would basically output as the hello exit automation from Raspberry Pi 3. Great. Now you can see that we are actually running our C sharp code on a Raspberry Pi much easier as like we did in our host machine. So simple it is to run a console application on a Raspberry Pi. So the only limitation we have right now is we don't really have a SDK of .NET Core available in Windows 10 IoT Core for now. So if the SDK is released, then probably we'll have another way of writing the code directly on the Raspberry Pi instead of writing the code in the host machine and copying the file over there, right? So this is how we can run a console application on Raspberry Pi 3 much easier like never before. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.